So for example, this question, you're given two minutes to do it. I would literally time you and in two minutes, you will type the answer, message me, and then I will proceed to solve it. The reason being, I'm giving you time to work it out. So if you make sure you have a piece of pen or a pencil and a paper, a piece of paper close by, so I'll work this out. Now, if you just wait on me to do the answers, you defeat the whole point of learning. So I want you to make an attempt of your own so you can start now and I'll begin timing. So go ahead, guys. Proceed to work this question out. It's a section two type question. When the time is up, I'll let you know. So go ahead. Have some correct responses already. Now you have about a minute left. First, we have to read the problem and then I will work it out. Okay guys, so let's actually look at the problem and solve it now. Good job Nathan as well. So let's look at this. So Barry wants to buy the item shown below. He says, so we get a pencil and online we put it into the He saves 25 each week or 5 Weeks. How many more weeks? Define how many more weeks do you figure that? If he continues to save $25 each week. So let's look at the question to be. Barry would save how much would he save in five weeks? Would he save $25 per week? How much you would save in five weeks would be twenty-five dollars multiplied by five weeks. That would give you one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Cost a total of three hundred and thirty-five dollars. How much money would Barry need? subtract 
Insta saved two hundred and fifty dollars. But Barry saved how much? Twenty five dollars per week. So how do we get the number of weeks needed? Divided by twenty-five. Twenty-five dollars per week, and that will give you a total of ten weeks. So that would be the solution for this question. Now, you know, this solution is not as important as the steps. So it is as important. It is as important as the steps, right? But don't just keep it over. You have to get the steps involved. Right, so this will be the steps involved for which you will take the product. If you need a tariff, it's some part of the same map in your people. You know, we'll take it. So there is a crucial step in your exam. So before I proceed to another question, let's see what you're going to use about the solution for this question. Or not. Because I want clarity, the exam, the exam is drawing pretty close. So I want to make sure you guys are comfortable in answering. Now remember, the point of these exercises is for you to get practice, and then I proceed to answer the solution. So good job, guys. So let's all go with people together, and let's see the answers. Now don't be bad. We have some more to practice. So we are doing question twenty. So let's get that two minutes to understand this problem exactly, and then I'll proceed to answer. Go ahead, guys. Attempt this question, and then I would start now. Okay, guys. So let's proceed to answer this one. Now, this one is more of an explanation type problem than it is a actually working it out to find the answer, right? So it's more reasoning involved here. Now, the idea here is that okay, you, you would be given the answer, but you have to explain why. Right? Explain. How this person's answer is smaller. So let's go to the reasoning. Let's go to the answer first. So the correct answer would be David. Now, why is David's answer smaller? Well. 
we will divide this number by 12. Ronel divides the number by 9. So, what is the explanation? Division by a bigger number. would give you a smaller one. So in other words, you'd, if you divide, let's take an example. So 12 by 9, let's use 100. Let's use 100 and 20. If we take 120 and divide it by 9, what would we get? 120 divided by 9 would give you about 13 and a third, right? I will work it out for you guys. For example, if we had divided 120 into 9, that would give you 13 and one third. Let's take the same 120 and divide it by 12. That would give you 10. So you can clearly see now that when you divide by a bigger number, you get a smaller answer. Right? So that is the solution or the explanation involved. Now remember, this question was twofold. It didn't want you to find the answer. It wanted you to say why. So one mark would have been for the answer and one mark would have been for the explanation. Right? So I wrote out type of the explanation for you guys in case you want to review it. One, you can take a screenshot of it. But before we go forward, let me make sure you guys understand this. So division by a bigger number always gives you a smaller one. Right? If you, if you divide by a smaller one, you will get a bigger number. You can see the explanation there on the screen. Right? So this was a section two question, as I see. Not all the section two questions is problem solving. Sometimes you have a um, like in this case, explanation, reasoning. Right. So, let's move on to another section, two type question. Right. So, each small square on the grid below is three centimeters by three centimeters. What is the area of the shape drawn on the grid? So guys, take two minutes again, accept this problem, and then I will proceed to work it out. Start now. guys have about 30 seconds left on this question before I proceed. Now I'm giving you these time allowances because in an exam setting, you're supposed to be completed this question in the time I'm giving. But what? So I would explain the problem to you all don't get.
he does. So by now, it should be completed or near completion of this problem. So I'm going to look it up. How do we proceed this battle? Well, always get a pencil and highlight the information that is needed. Good job, Nathan, as well. Now, normally, a question like this would give you a one centimeter by one centimeter grid. In this case, it is three centimeters by three centimeters. So the first thing you need to work out is how, what is the area of one small square? So one small square will represent this part here. So this would be one small square. And what would be the area of one small square? That would be the first thing we need to know. Well, the area of a square would be side by side. Or side square, right? So that would be three centimeters by three centimeters to give you nine centimeters square. Okay, don't forget your unit. Right, so that would be step one of the problem. Find the area of one small square. Now the other part of the problem would be to count the number of squares. So what you can do is count the number of whole squares and then the number of half squares. Right, so let me just write it. Number of whole squares. And the number of half squares. Right, you need both information to solve the problem. So how many whole squares there is in this sheet? So let's take a look at, it, look at it. So you can always take a pencil and put them in the problem. So we have one, two, three, four. This is a half square next. So we can't check that. Then we would have five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, we would have nine of these squares here, which are whole. So the number of whole squares would be nine. Now let's look at the number of half squares. So these are different colors to illustrate that. We have one half square here, two half squares, three half squares, and four half squares. Right, so those would be the number of half squares in the problem. So if you're confused, just think about the problem as having whole squares and half squares. Count the number of whole squares first or the half squares after. Now, if you are comfortable enough, you can count them as whole squares all together one time, right? But if you aren't comfortable, count the whole and then count the half. So how many whole squares do we have now? Well, we counted a total of nine. How many half squares do we have? Again, we counted a total of four. So how much squares would be four half squares? Four half squares would represent a total of how much? Good job, Joshua. Two squares. Right? Four half squares equals two whole squares. So what would be the total squares in the problem now? Total squares would be the nine whole ones plus the four half, which is really two, to give you 11 squares. So that would be 11 squares in all. Now, what was the area of one small square now? Good job, Joshua. The area of one small square would have been nine centimeters squared, which we worked in the first part. So, since one small square, equals to 9 centimeters square, 11 squares would be equal to how many guys? 11 multiplied by 9, that would give you 99 centimeters square. Right, so this was the thought process and the working to solve this problem. Right, so as I'm saying, I'm giving you time to work it out and then I work it out. So it's not about 
just get any answer. We had to understand the process and the question. You'll be awarded marks for working out such. So as I said, if you were very comfortable in the question, this part, you could have done it in one step, right? By simply counting them. So before I proceed to another question, let's make sure we understand this. So let me know in the poll if you are confused about this question or if we follow it now. Right, so just let me know in the poll if you are confused or if you are if you follow the question. Right, guys. So you can take a screenshot of the solution and you could also reassemble the question if you want. Right at home. Now the point of these exercises, as I will keep saying, is not just to give you the answers to these things. It's to understand the thought process. I give you a little time to think through the problem. Then I work it out. The point of that is to build your exam technique. Right, so let's actually try a section three question. Oh. So let's do question 38. So this question is with four marks. So the amount of marks is like a gauge you can use to tell you how much time should you take on this problem. So you'll be given four minutes in this exam, in this question. Get time, try to work it out, and then I will proceed to provide a solution. So start now, guys.
Alright guys, you have approximately one minute left. Okay guys, so you're supposed to be completed with the problem by now. So let's proceed to work this problem. Now, I'll keep saying this, make sure you have a pencil and underline the important information in problems like these. So we would have bottles of medicine each holding 250 milliliters are packed into cases each holding a dozen. So that's the first piece of information. Let's write it down as we go along. So we have 250 ml bottles packed into cases. Right, so the first thing we need to understand is this. What, how much is a liter? 1,000 milliliters equal to one liter. So this is the first piece of information that we need to know. What is the next piece of information? One dozen equals to twelve. That's the other piece of information we we need to know. So let's find the number of liters. So the number of liters in one case would be how many guys? To be 12 multiplied by 250. Right, so 12 multiplied by 250 would give you a total of 3000 milliliters. But 3000 milliliters would be equivalent to what? 3 liters. Right, so this is what we would do so far. So let me recap. So one bottle of medicine would have a total of 250 milliliters, right? You need to know that a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter, as you could see here. The other piece of information is that one dozen equal to 12. So how much liters of medicine would there be in one case? There would be a total of three. So let's go on to the question now. So get back your pencil and you can underline. A 10 liter container of medicine was used to fill medicine bottles. So, if we use 10 liters, right, how much cases can we fill? So, let's work it out. If 10 liters of medicine used, we can use Three cases of medicine. Why would we use three cases of medicine? Remember, each case is three. So each case represents three liters. So therefore, in 10 liters, we can get nine liters, right? Which is the three cases of medicine. And one liter remaining. Right, so we have one liter remaining. So let's go back to the problem with our pencil. So we need to find how much more medicine is needed to fill another case. 
right? So we would have been we'd have been able to fill three cases of medicine fully, but we'd be left with one liter remaining. But what information do we have from the problem? That's useful. Well, three liters would be equal to one case. But we already have one. So, two liters would be needed. Right? So, we need two liters to fill the remaining. Right? Containers. So, this would be the step to solve the problem. Right, guys. So let me recap this problem. This was a little bit tricky because it had so much packed in the question. Now, an exam technique is to always underline the important information of a problem because sometimes you can overlook it. So you have underlined the 250 milliliters of packed into cases holding a dozen. So first you have found out, okay, how much liters are there in a dozen? One dozen is 12. So we can multiply 12 by 250 to give you 3,000 milliliters. However, a thousand milliliters is one liter. So three thousand milliliters would represent three liters. So if ten liters of medicine were used, we can use three cases of medicine, right? Which would be nine liters, and we'll have one remaining. So what do we need to do now? After we get the remaining, we need how much more? Two liters to make up another case, and that would have been the solution or the steps involved in solving this. So before I move to another question, let me know if you guys understood the solution for this problem. You can screenshot the answer and you can also reattempt the question. Right? Remember, this is a section three question, so it was it shouldn't be as straightforward as the others. Right, so excellent job guys. So we still have a couple of minutes left. So let's do another question before we end the class today. Right. We have time to look at one more problem. So I looked at the section three. Now let's go to section two again. Right, so the table below shows the sizes of shirts worn by some children. How many students wear shirt sizes? smaller than 14. So you guys have two minutes to answer this problem and then I would proceed to provide an explanation. Right? Remember, I'm giving you two minutes because that is the time you should take an exam to answer a question like this. It's worth two months. So go ahead, guys, and then I would follow with the solution. Excuse me, so what we have to do? Try to work the question out on your own first as though it's an exam question, and then I work it out for you guys with the explanation. Right, so if you have a piece of paper and pencil, attempt it as though it's an exam.
All right, guys, you have about 30 seconds left, so you should be wrapping up your problem by now. Okay, guys, so I'll proceed to answer the problem now. Right, now when you're given tables like this, always pay attention to what the headers say. So we have two columns here. One represents shirt sizes. So this will be the shirt size of 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, right? This is shirt sizes, not the number of students. So that's the first thing to identify in the problem. So this is what we call a frequency table, right? So you would have five children, so the frequency would represent this in blue. So you have five children with shirt size 11, seven children with shirt size 12, four children with shirt size 13, 11 children with shirt size 14, and so on. But the question said this. You want to find students who wear Shirt sizes smaller than 40. So what are shirt sizes that are, that are smaller than 14? Would be size 11, 12, and 13. Right, so if we look at the red, which is typically 11, 12, and 13, how many students would have 11? The number of students having 11 would be 5. The number of students having 12 would be 7, and the number of students having 13 would be 4. So since we are considering shirt sizes that are less than 40, you have to stop here. We cannot include 40. We are considering the size less than 40. So what would be the answer? 7 plus 5 plus 4. The total would be 16 students. So the key in not mixing up this problem was recognizing which was the shirt sizes, which would have been the red, and the number of children, which would have been five, seven, and four in this case. So just as a, a, a second, a follow-up to this question. If the question asks how many students wear shirt sizes that are more than 40, which, how many students would that be if it's more than 40? Excellent. So Sajula said it, and that would be correct because more than 14, good job Nathan as well, more than 14 would simply be 15. And that's every shirt size is 15. The number of students would be eight. So don't mix up the number of students with the shirt sizes, right? When you're given frequency questions like this. So this is the last question we could do today, unfortunately. But before I close, let me make sure you guys understood this problem and the solution. Okay, brilliant work, guys. Now I know the exam is quickly approaching, so this is why we are doing this setup, where I'm giving you opportunity to answer the problem on your own, and then I provide the solution. Right, guys? So, yes, as Nathan said, the exam is in 16 days, so don't panic, just keep working on problems like these. So what you can do is take a screenshot of the question before you do it, attempt it, write your solution, and then you can see what my solution is. So you can tell yourself, okay, if you went to the correct steps in solving the problem. Right, guys? So, no problem, Leanne. I will do some problems with time, right? So you, are, you can also message me topics. So I know um, Sajida requested um, unequal sharing. So the next session we have, which would be on Friday, I would include some unequal sharing problems and some time and fractions. Right? So that's the questions you requested. So guys, we have come to the end of this tutorial. It was a pleasure serving you today. Please take a minute to fill out the quality control questions that would appear at the end of this meeting. Let us know what you would like us to do differently and how we can improve the better space. Thank you for choosing BetterSpace.com. Do have a great week and do have a blessed evening. Goodbye, guys.